So what you do with a campaign level is, and let's just use the example. So I, re- I watched this, uh, I watched, I listened to this podcast called The Black Tapes, which I really thoroughly enjoyed. And um, in The Black Tapes, it's about a bunch of, it's a modern story. It's about mm-hmm. a bunch of stuff being caught on like VHS tapes and camcorders about supernatural stuff. Totally not true. It's just a story thing. Um, and so I liked it so much that I was like, oh, wait a minute. I should take this concept and move it into a game. And so what I did for you guys in mm-hmm. this GURPS campaign is it was modern day stuff. And we were kind of doing like an X-Files-ish game. And the three of you guys came together because of uh, the professor had died. So it's mm-hmm. very Lovecraftian. The mm-hmm. professor had died and left it in his will that these guys should come and help. Yes. And the executor of the will was actually the guy that would later backstab him if you listened to us in the backstab yeah, episode. Yeah, that, yeah, that's your Plague Demon campaign. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so what ended up happening, though, was uh, when we were doing the whole thing with everything, um, the mystery was, okay, so you guys don't even know there's anything supernatural. So you go out to investigate his murder type of a thing. Mm-hmm. And then that led you to um, some other weird, uh, a weird mysterious thing happening like in uh, the Pacific Northwest in an area like in the cemetery. And as you guys started investigating the cemetery, there was a number of options that opened up of figuring out who the person was that died, figuring out who the person was that was accused of the crime but was acquitted. Mm-hmm. Um, and then looking at the the kind of, I think there was somebody that was, that claimed they were guilty of the crime. But when you guys investigated, it's like, there's no way this guy's guilty. And then as they started investigating and like exhumed the body and started looking at other things, um, I don't think you exhumed the body. I think you just looked, you found the medical records and you found mm-hmm. out that the autopsy was a hundred percent wrong, like mm-hmm. purposely falsified because what had happened is they started seeing that something had like erupted from the inside out. And on the inside of the body was, was written tattoo. like tattoos on the inside of the yes. body, which is like, how does that even work? Because there's no tattoos on the outside of the body. Mm-hmm. And so as they started investigating the tattoos and stuff, they find out that it's all ritual magic that's prevented. It's designed to kind of summon something, which is what kind of happened is they summoned something inside this body. And then, you know, as time went on, there was a there was a, a cabin in the woods you guys figured out was kind of the nexus point of this whole thing. And there was there was uh, kind of ritual magic all around it, like mm-hmm. written in it. And it was written in a weird way not to get rid of things, but to bring things in, in. to the world. And so what it was, it was, it was just like a, think of it like an, an episode of the X-Files, really, where it's like, so... The, the crew shows up on scene, nothing really weird's going on, right? No idea what's happening. But okay, our professor has died and he's left us this will with this really weird instruction to go someplace. We go someplace for investigating this murder. Who cares? Not a big deal. And all of a sudden the thing just goes slant ways. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, wait, demons, magic, summoning... And they're all now getting a crash course on stuff that none of them even knew was a possibility. And because it's kind of an X-Files thing, it's like it's all now brought in to reality yes. for them. And so the advantage of all that is it. what I did is I just kind of like sparsed out the clues as we went along. Mm-hmm. And then just kind of said, well, what do you want to do with it? And if they got stuck, I would just say, okay, well, remember, you can still go talk to the sheriff that investigated this crime. You can go talk to the coroner who obviously lied because you've seen pictures that were wrapped up. You go talk to the mayor of the town who you find is like he ordered the record sealed to try mm-hmm. to see what's going on there. You go to the local library to investigate the the weird writings that you found. There's all these options you can do. Yes. And the thing was to add back to one of our, I think it was like the last episode is... You could look at the, uh, there were some things on a timeline where like, oh, we chose to go talk to so-and-so. And and then in the meantime, I had the sheriff get killed. Yes, you did. Because somebody's covering up their tracks. The sheriff didn't have any critical pieces of information, truly. Like I could move some of his critical to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But he did have information that would have been helpful to maybe take a false lead or two out of the whole scenario. Yes. Anyway. So how you run a mystery campaign really is where I was going with it is I wanted to tell a story about um, a group of people that are now exposed to the supernatural for the kind of the first time. Mm-hmm. How would they react? And then then the, the, the climax of it was there's a demon who's trying to be summoned into our planet 
and what are you guys going to do to stop it? Now, I knew you would stop it. I mean, that wasn't the, the, the concern wasn't like, are they going to try to like trap the demon and talk to it? No, I knew you guys were going to try to stop it. But the question was like, what can you stop it in time was the mm -hmm. question. And so like, can you put enough clues together fast enough? And so I created, and I talked about this before in a lot of our other time ca uh, podcasts and, and videos, like I created this timeline of events. Like you had like three weeks to get this whole thing done. Mm -hmm. And so if you talk to so-and-so and you talk to so-and-so, you talk to, I mean, I knew these things would take, like you're going to take two hours talking to this sheriff, you know, like it's an hour to get there. It's maybe a little more than two hours, right? You're going to spend an hour getting out there to find him. You're going to have to spend like five to 10 minutes haggling with him to even get him to talk at all. Mm -hmm. He's going to talk to her maybe 10 minutes. And then now you got a, you got an hour drive back. So it's an hour and a half yeah. of time. Two and a half hours of time is gone. Well, then that two and a half hours time, you can't now go interview this guy because he's no longer where he's supposed to be. So that's mm -hmm. got to wait till tomorrow. Well, the problem is tonight he's going to get killed. Yes. So his information's dead. And I just kind of put this on a quick timeline. And I just kind of literally just went, okay, here's our event. Here's our next event. Here's these branch. This branch can go on for, like, this branch is open for a week. Mm -hmm. This branch is open for literally, like, two days. This branch is open literally for, like, an hour and a half. Like, if you don't take this branch right now, it dies. Mm -hmm. But this branch, the information in this branch that's critical can also be found down in this other branch down here as long as, you know, they didn't find it up here. Yeah. And so that's kind of how I would do a mystery RPG is I would figure out what mystery I want to tell. That's the hardest part. And then give them branching ideas. And I literally will write out clue found here, false, right, red herring, clue. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, I, and a lot of times it's not just you get a clue and a red herring. Sometimes you get a clue, sorry, sometimes you don't get a clue or a red herring. You get a clue and a red herring, yes. right? Yes. And so the clue's, the clue's accurate, but the way that they couched the cr clue to you, they gave you a red herring. And it's not because mm -hmm. they were purposely trying to mislead you, or were they? Or <laughs> sometimes it's because the person themselves, like the sheriff, for instance, which you guys didn't talk to, but the sheriff was a good guy. He got ordered from on high to, to stop it, and so he did, so he didn't lose his job. Mm -hmm. But he was never happy with it. It always bothered him, and he was always looking for answers. Mm -hmm. So he's happy once he realizes that you're not there to, like, I guess, you know, bust him from the guy who came down on high. He's happy to give you the information he has. But he's going to, he's basically going to say, I think so and so did it. Well, so and so didn't do it. Mm -hmm. But he, that's not like he's lying to you. He honestly believes that from the investigation he's done, he thinks so and so did it. And the thing is, he yeah. never bought into the supernatural. Yeah, he, he, so, he, he's tackling it from a cold case standpoint, exactly. not from a cold case. So he's right. going to have, he's going to have you wrong information because he's looking underneath the wrong rocks. Exactly. Right. And so once you understand that, life is a lot easier and a mm -hmm. lot more uh, understandable. So the thing that I also want to deal with uh, really quickly mm -hmm. is that, you know, when you're doing a mystery, you don't necessarily have to know where the end is, but yes. you do have to have a general vague idea of what you want to come up, like what they're solving. You don't have to know who did it or how it all worked. I yeah. didn't. Um, but as I went through, I literally just made sure that every week I would have three to four different branching options for you guys mm -hmm. and ideas of where clues would take me. And if you went down a branch that you couldn't, like because of that, you destroyed another branch that was critical, I made sure that there was some sort of thing found. So it's like, mm -hmm. so let's say the, the sheriff's information was 100% critical. You guys didn't see the sheriff and said you went to go and visit this abandoned building. I'm like, okay, well, the sheriff's going to die tonight. You're not going to see the sheriff. Cool. What you're going to find now is you're going to find a piece of some photocopied, poorly photocopied remnants from the police file that the sheriff also had. Mm -hmm. And then the next morning, you're going to wake up to a news bulletin saying that the sheriff was shot and killed and his house was set on fire. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh, wait a minute. Now we're really close. And the information that the sheriff had has been burned. But you found a copy of the pertinent stuff that the sheriff was going to give you, albeit a little bit well nastily copied, and but still there. You also opened up another thing that might have a little bit more clues. Yeah, hastily burning a hastily burning a house. There might be some paper remnants from the yep. sheriff's thing of right. So that could he... be a thing. You could go there and you could find the paperwork from, you know. And now there's some 
not critical, but would have been helpful to have bits. But burned, but, right? But, but, so, but, but you could also have like. But you have him, the criticals. Him also like helping you with some some of tying some of the loose ends. Of, yes. Yep. Well, the coroner did this because he was forced to. So we, right. Me and the coroner didn't sit right with this, but we couldn't do anything about it. Right. It came so, out. The mayor told us. Yep. That so, and he threatened us so too. This, right. So the coroner's not going to be as helpful because he's yeah. no longer. Being right. If you saw as if you saw he, the sheriff or the coroner instead of going to the abandoned building, you could have ruled out the other. Yes. Because uh, maybe potentially you yeah. just have a good reason to rule out the other. It's like, well, we were both threatened. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you read in my report, it's. I mean, it, I literally wrote exactly what they said to write. And if you looked at my other reports, I even changed my handwriting on it. Mm -hmm. Like, and I made it look like I someone forged my signature mm -hmm. because I didn't want. I didn't want to be tied to this. this. So, like, I purposely just signed my name with my left hand. Yeah. And I'm right-handed, right, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you look at it that way, there's some really cool things you can do for an RPG uh, in, in a mystery. Yeah. The real issue is you just need to figure out what are the, like, I'm going to say seven vital clues to get your players to someplace. Yes. As a DM or a GM, whatever you want to call yourself, you need to track it a lot more closely than you would like a D&D &D campaign, for instance, where mm -hmm. you kind of fly by the seat of your pants. Because you need to know what clues they've gotten, what clues they haven't, and know that the clues that they haven't gotten would pers change how they view the clues they do have. Yes. So you always want to have kind of a notepad that just says, you don't want to just go, what do you want to do tonight? You just kind of go, okay, if you remember in our last session, you found this clue, you found this clue. That person told you that it was leading to this. Um, you still have the opportunity to go check out this place, this place, and this place. And now given the information they've told you, you now could check out this and this other thing. Yes. So which do you want to do? And then if there's any time critical ones, you just mm -hmm. call out like, you're not sure, you know, now that the, now that the sheriff got killed, do you want to go see the coroner? Yeah. Or the mayor? Right? Because all of a sudden you're kind of going, hmm. Now the sheriff's place was set on fire. Do you want to go see that abandoned building? Yeah. Do you want to go see the grave? Like, you know, because all of a sudden you're now you're putting doubt in the player's mind of will these people be around forever? Will these places be, be undisturbed? Yes. Right. And also, depending on how everything goes. Yeah. You burning things could actually create an opportunity that they see that you didn't. And yep. as long as you can go off the cuff. Putting some of those clues there is a great skill. Exactly. And that's the biggest, I think, the hardest thing to do, but it's exactly what I recommend. I want you to basically put out a timeline. How long do you think this this thing's going to take, right? How many uh, days, weeks, months, years, or whatever mm -hmm. do your players have to figure stuff out? And then, so doing a modern uh, X-Files, like use X-Files. Go watch an episode of the X-Files, uh, like one of the season one episodes. Mm -hmm. And ask yourself, okay, how what's the timeline for this episode, right? Normally it's under yeah. a week. And normally there's stuff that happens in the first season specifically where it's like, if I see this person, this thing happened. If I saw this person, this other thing happened. So they're constantly getting their clues narrowed in their perspective. And that's yes. okay. You as the you as God in this game, right? You as the GM can go, yeah, if they miss this vital clue here, I can just move it in a different form down here like mm -hmm. the papers is a great example like burn papers now like how many movies how many tv shows have burned papers where yeah some of the critical stuff some of the what you thought was critical is gone but you still have the name mm -hmm. and that's really the critical piece right that's the piece you really needed yeah the context around it would have been helpful but all of a sudden it's like why did they burn like why do i have so-and-so's medical record here mm -hmm. that doesn't make any sense like even though it's all burned up, like I don't know what they have. Yeah. Like I have their or, name. Or even right? a line or two of a conversation between the cop and the coroner might be enough that right. the coroner is no longer as suspicious. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe you find the sheriff's diary. Mm -hmm. Right? In the sheriff's diary, you find the one of the pages that survived was the page where him and the coroner were sat down in a room by the now mayor, but used to be chief of police, right? Mm -hmm. And said Hey guys, we're ending this right now. If you don't want to end it right now, that's fine. I'm going to end your career. Make sure you never work in law enforcement or in the in the coroner's role ever again. And 
oh, by the way, I know that your daughter walks to school. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, wait a minute. (laughs) You know, like that looked very thinly guised as a threat. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, what do we need to do? And he literally has the closure papers already filled out for both of them. Mm -hmm. I just need you to sign. Mm -hmm. And that's when the coroner is like, okay. And he's like, and then I noticed the coroner signed with his left hand. And I know he's right handed because I've watched him do autopsies before. And there's no way you handle a scalpel with your right hand and you sign with your left. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no way that's happening, right? Yep. So you have all these things where you can easily trickle out the information. So start with, like, an X-Files episode, figure out what your clues will be, jot them all on a timeline, and then play them out. And I think you'll have a really good time with them. I love doing the mystery games, mm-hmm. and I love playing them as well. So with that, we'll see you next week. <laughs>